happening, it's the happening. So to shake off the April Fool's dust I just pocket sanded you in the face with, let's get to the actual content of today's video. Now, Mother Nature can be a cruel bitch sometimes, leading to catastrophic events spurred from natural disasters, drought, famine, pestilence, and more. But what if all those very real and dangerous threats were brushed to the wayside to instead have us technically turning against ourselves? What if the plants that we have all around us themselves saw how we were treating the planet and kept noticing the bee population and destruction of all natural resources and forests and then just went up to us and said Crush em. what would happen if all plant life on earth suddenly deemed humanity a threat for its countless misdeeds and fired back like a collective consciousness ticking the proverbial doomsday clock what if plants were like every online forum and told each and every person on the planet KYS? Well, that's the subject of M. Night Shyamalan's weirdest, or one of his weirdest concept movies ever. Ripe with Mark Wahlberg's trademark awkward facial gestures and a knack for talking to plants. The scenario is, what if every person that was touched by... <laughs> <laughs> the wind suddenly decided to off themselves in any way they could because they breathed. Well, if you did not listen to Al Gore for the last few decades, you're gonna end up like this. We didn't take care of our earth and now you've inherited our problems. We didn't listen. We, we didn't listen. And then this. Prepare to fall prey to the plants, as I genuinely and seriously say that today we are actually discussing why you wouldn't survive the happenings Wahlberg aerotoxin. Touching down into a universe that tried to make static footage of wind blowing through trees and grass to be some kind of, uh, mind boggling horrific scenario like something made by Alfred Hitchcock and just becoming a f miserable failure at it, this is what we're into. Over the course of our prolonged existence as the dominant species on the planet, mankind has ramped up its production methods to coincide with a vast population increase that destruction of the natural environment was apparently mandatory. Countless green life had been chopped down for homes and goods, greenlands destroyed to pave way for development, grasses and forests turned to charred wastelands all by accident or not. Many of mankind's feats had been chopping up the greenery in Mother Nature's bush. I just said that. And Mother Nature and its plant life, because of this, were rightfully pissed. Flora can't feel, but it can feel, if you can feel me, and it can feel something. A feely feel. A feely feel that feels feely. Al Gore, the day after tomorrow, global warming warnings, and more had warned us of all that. Now it was time for the plants to verse the zombies, just like the game had said. But guess what? The zombies are us because we are zombies in our day-to-day -day lives. And with the plants versus zombies coming to fruition, we were not prepared for what the plants had in store. As one Dr. William Ross states, a neurotoxin would be found produced by some plants and trees. Comparing what would come for humanity to the events of the current red tide within the world's vast oceans, a harmful algal bloom. While a majority of red tide algae is actually beneficial to the sea's ecosystem, offering food for fish and water flora to feed off of, a small percentage of the algal bloom is actually highly toxic when consumed or even breathed. Either by this toxic consumption or via algae dying in mass due to either human development or underwater environmental disasters, the decaying of large portions of algae can deplete nearly all oxygen in coastal areas. It is actually a common occurrence in the Florida coast, causing the deaths of wildlife there or forcing them to migrate, causing kind of a red tide. 
earning its moniker. Now, while red tide can be catastrophic for fish, for humans, it mostly can just cause food poisoning, skin irritation, and even the brevitoxins produced by it can become airborne to nearby beaches, causing congestion and coughs for people affected. This may be the catalyst and precursor to what suddenly spawned the neurotoxin in nearby areas in the movie. Red tide going airborne and possibly mutating in plant life on land around the world, specifically on the east coast of the United States of America. Now, pertaining to this being apparently a disaster movie, where do you think things are going to start? It's an American movie, and it's a disaster movie, so I think you know the answer to this. It's in the Big Apple, baby! After an untold amount of generations of plants of all shapes and sizes had begun to recognize Homo sapiens as threats to their existence, and, via unknown methods, did they all evolve and mutate to start producing a very specific kind of neurotoxin. Also stated within the movie, the only way for plants to fight back against anything that is a threat to them is to adapt to evolve, to basically make themselves deadly to those around them. That is their only method of fighting back. They can use chemicals. That's right, chemicals. Chemical warfare. Yeah, that's right. The plants outside your window are plotting to chemical warfare you right now. No. <sighs> Triggering exactly on a Tuesday morning at 8.33 a.m., the hustle and bustle of New York City near the coast would become ground zero to what I would label as the Wahlberg aerotoxin. What? No! Sorry, Mark, but you are the face of the movie, and you apparently can talk to plants whether they're real or not. So, your name is going to be attached to the virus in this, or the toxin, whatever. While there is no such thing as an aerotoxin, I I feel like a neurotoxin delivered via the air fits that terminology pretty well. Now, seeing the symbology around this, Manhattan's towering buildings had all been menacingly walling off the landscape of Central Park, the only piece of green within the New York City landscape, a symbolic image of the height of humanity's development in the concrete jungles. And as a YouTuber, I feel like I can recognize this symbology. I had not seen people make this connection yet, so I can lay claim to this first. To befit the folly of man and its arrogant ways, Central Park within New York City would become ground zero, where the Wahlberg aerotoxin would first be triggered. Suddenly, people that had unknowingly breathed in this aerotoxin would have it invade the olfactory bulbs of the nasal passage and gain access to the brain, a process that is near instantaneous once the particle hits the gray matter that will begin, only triggering a reaction in a person's brain if allowed to accumulate within a certain density. The affected individual or individuals will immediately grow still, stopping whatever they were doing to blankly stare into nothingness for a short period of time doing nothing in unison with anyone else nearby that also unknowingly took a hit off the hydroponic chronic. Some infected, instead of going directly into this near catatonic but mobile state, will instead begin to display other symptoms, seeing hallucinations looking like they are crazy or paranoid, flashing back to points in their lives at seemingly random, like the military cadet going through his army training regiment and screaming his commands. Some becoming paralyzed and seizing up, and others having difficulty breathing to the point of asphyxiation, lending to the idea of the toxin being a cyobacterial toxin linked to neurodegenerative diseases that also affect the nose. Regardless, once these symptoms have started to display in a victim, their fate is all but sealed in that moment. Eventually, every person will enter the final symptomatic state, completely still and lifeless in their demeanor and expression. They will be completely unresponsive to all stimuli, creating an eerie scene of people acting like mannequins caught in a frame of life, standing firm like trees. From there, every infected mind will begin to scan their environment and surroundings, searching for tools, places, or methods that can result in death for themselves. Once their eyes have locked in, the body will begin to move, as if like a robot set on a designated goal 
From there, the person will do whatever they can to end themselves. Guns, pieces of glass, crashing cars, stuffing yourself in a lawnmower, jumping off a high point like a rooftop or cliff. For breaking her heart. smashing your head against hard surfaces, putting yourself in harm's way like a wildcat enclosure to be eaten alive and be torn apart. All this can happen to you just by simply breathing in something you cannot see outside or even inside that will have you looking to end yourself like a Star Wars fan every time they see a new show or movie for their own franchise. This occurs because the aerotoxin veritably flips the self-preservation mechanism within our own brains. We will go coconut balls deep into the call of the void. That little voice in your head that says to jump off cliffs and whatnot, well, you are going to go full force into that. The toxin will block the neurotransmitters and electrical pulses within your brain to limit anything a person can do except kill themselves by any way possible. But how exactly does this aerotoxin get around? What can be done to stop it from the individual to the societal reach? And what can you do to, well, the point of the video, to survive? When it first invades whatever location it emerges from at first, panic in the streets will ensue, with seemingly random clumps of people suddenly falling dead from their own actions while others going hysterical over the side of strangers, not knowing if you're infected or not because the people that are hallucinating and people that are freaking out from what's in front of them, we don't know what's going on. Strangers, friends, and family are committing these acts and everyone is going crazy. Many will believe these events to be biochemical terrorist attacks causing hysteria. Mother of God, what kind of terrorists are these? Mother Nature. The ground zero of Manhattan and the surrounding areas within the northwestern United States was hypothesized because apparently of the high volumes of nuclear power plants that are uh, polluting the surrounding areas. Although I don't know the factual significance, those are some of the hypotheses as to why it started in the northeastern United States. And we all know the actual reason it's because everything has to start in New York. Plants will begin to pick up scents and presences of people nearby and release these aerotoxins sporadically, possibly as a result of their newly developed and evolved mutations that any humans nearby are a threat that must be poisoned. Spewing the toxins from the air, plants and trees will rely on variables for the conditions of infecting people to be met. For one thing, the more people that are in a close or relatively populated area, the higher the chance that the Wahlbergs will be released. <laughs> Simply that, the more of a threat that there is in numbers, the more a plant's defensive and offensive mechanism will be triggered. Major cities and population centers will be quickly swept up into this craze due to this simple fact. The toxins will also be carried via the wind, which for the most part, if conditions realistically aren't windy, you would think the spread of Wahlberg would be less intrusive. However, it would seem the chemicals released by tons of these plants would also have an effect on the local environment and climate. Through scientific methods, I literally cannot explain and just don't feel like it. Just like the director M. Night Shyamalan, these chemicals, I guess, just cause high winds to whip up when introduced to the air. So that the spread of this mind-altering plot device, <clears throat> I mean, neurotoxin could easily be dispersed. Meaning, if you're outside with a bunch of people and you see the wind, well, it's probably too late for you unless you have a filtered breathing apparatus on hand. And let's go ahead and say this outright, I don't care how the movie portrays it, it was one of the dumbest scenes I've ever seen in the movie, you are not outrunning the fucking wind. You ever heard the phrase, run like the wind? That's because you realistically cannot do that. Well. In this case, now you can try to run from the wind. Those freaking elves, man. They just came out of the trees, man. They just came out of the trees. But you'll just end up getting hit and holding your breath until it's too much, and then you breathe the stuff in, and now you're done. If you're in a place with a decent amount of people like a city or suburb, it's safe to say you're pretty much a goner if you're not well prepared. But if you find yourself in smaller pockets of populations, 
Ah, you could stand a chance. Spectating through televised events or personal accounts from indoors to the world outside, the full nature of Mother Nature's full wrath can be ascertained, and many could resort to a variety of different ways to stay alive. Like, I don't know, going out into the open countryside where less and less people and cities exist, thinning the numbers of human groups that you'll have to interact with to avoid the aerotoxin. For so, for a lot of people in my generational gap, avoiding people is not something we are too unfamiliar with. That and you will either have to have gas masks on hand or procure gas masks to filtrate the aerotoxin or weather stripping your houses to keep things shut off at the windows and doors and shutting off air conditioning to prevent breaches in air so you don't get infected in your own home. But this would have to come to your knowledge quickly and to give you ample time to get supplies to do so in the midst of pandemic level panics ravaging stores for these supplies. That's right, if you're not prepared, you're probably going to rush to your nearest to supply store, Walmart, or what have you. And it would also rely on news sources and social media platforms to accurately depict and inform us what this aerotoxin is, what it is capable of, and establish safety against it. <clears throat> now, since we aren't all highly intellectual individuals like Mark Wahlberg portraying a high school science teacher, many of us probably wouldn't come to the conclusion that the less people that are in close proximity to each other, that the less chance that the aerotoxin will detect and infect. I, for one, don't believe this hypothesis. While you can say I'm wrong and that Mark Wahlberg and Co.'s arrival at the farm spurred things to happen for the old woman, I would say that this claim is contradicted because the elderly woman that was completely fine sitting outside not having a care in the world was infected after living alone with nobody else around for years out in the middle of nowhere and proceeded to just simply get infected and off herself in the most headbanger metal manner possible. So with that said, while the idea that going into less populated areas and panic buying doomsday materials and air supplies, it's this course of events that would ultimately screw over every single person rushing to save themselves and their loved ones. The number one thing to apparently do is to not go where most people are and to avoid the air. Yeah, the, the air. Yet people will still go out into highly populated centers to buy supplies for themselves to survive, effectively ignoring the number one rule of not going out near a lot of people and the number two rule of not breathing in the aerotoxin before they can do anything. We saw how things went with the pandemic a few years ago. People were panic buying like crazy and we're all right next to each other. That and most people would be woefully unprepared for a doomsday scenario where diminishing supplies and downed water and power grids would force people to at least venture out of their homes to try and get some kind of supplies. Those panicking or unprepared would accidentally become infected and off themselves too. What? No. Less populated areas also typically mean going to open areas full of, <clears throat> Think about it for a second. If you're trying to get to places where there's not a lot of people, what is there going to be a lot of? Yep, you guessed it. Plenty of plant life and trees and grass and all that stuff. And with more and more plants and trees around suddenly evolving to release these toxins, and with more people migrating outwards from cities and highly populated areas just to survive, it is easy to say that nowhere would be safe, even if you lone wolf it out into the fat of the lands. It is stated in the film that the toxin will rapidly dissipate in the air once it is released. And while this may seem like good news that you can just wait out the toxins in the air, it does not mean plants will stop producing the Wahlberg toxin. They pretend like the plants are going to just stop making it. With more and more plants taking on this new method of self-defense and the airborne nature of these mutations being unstoppable, it is probable that we could see all plant life constantly spewing these toxins. Meaning, it wouldn't matter if they dissipate quickly or not if they are always being produced and rushing to where more plants are 
part of this legion of toxic spewing devices and it would just be more dooming for all of us plants would eventually just make it non-stop to ward off the predator that is man especially with the largest threat in man's arsenal that is vegetarians and vegans sorry to my stepmom angie the plants definitely noted how you always bring up that you're a vegan at restaurants so now she is on their most wanted list it's a good thing she doesn't watch my videos because she would probably shoot me for saying that. Governments and military scientists would quickly seek to stop the airborne Wahlberg aerotoxin, but to stop it means destroying the very things we need to continue to breathe. There isn't much we can do about that. Maybe we can make some antitoxins that could be sprayed into the air to nullify the effects, but that would require much trial and tribulation, and I don't know if we would have the time to combat that. And you can't just burn down forest and grasslands. It's not like killing off like infected animals or anything. We need these to survive. The options will become few and far between, but if you do have a plan, let me know down below because I can't think of anything of how you would survive. So what it comes down to for you is to <laughs> not breathe. Yeah, in most cases, just don't breathe, bro. Don't be in high population areas or you'll be the first among the dead before we as a society even know what's going on. If you don't have proper weather stripping, a proper air filtration system, or gas masks with proper emergency supplies, you're most likely gonna be dead. Most importantly, don't be around plants. That's easier said than done. Your best chance is to maybe be somewhere in like a desert or frozen tundra to limit the amount of plant life that is around that can intrude upon your nasal cavity. But thinking about it, apparently in just the span of a little over 24 hours did this widespread toxin that was destroying a lot of people across the northeastern United States just suddenly disappear all at once. And then, shortly in a day or two, just reappears across the ocean in France. Now, it doesn't make sense to me that it was able to jump from Northeast America to France without any in-between or notification that it was migrating like this. But sure, I guess it's just global and it's randomly picking moments for it to attack just because it feels like it. But looking at it purely based on the events of the happening, there is one method that could guarantee your survival outside of just location, location, location location. The events of the movie show Mark Wahlberg, Zoe 101, and a plot-armored child attempting to survive in the boonies over the course of a little over a day. Running away from the wind, talking to fake plants, watching people off themselves, making funny faces like he just smelled a rank-ass fart -a toxin, telling people scientific methods, having John Leguizamo die via his own wrists, looking like how he must have been after not getting cast as Luigi for the animated Mario movie. Random people offing themselves so that the trailer for the movie would make the film look more interesting than it ever was, having people run and staring at grass while looking at stock footage of trees, watching teens get blasted like they were knocking on a Texas door at 3 a.m., no! and just going to grandma's house to find refuge, just for her to die and then for the characters to sit in separate rooms talking through a pipe. It wasn't until the end of the movie where Mark Wahlberg was in a room separate from Zoe Deschanel and they were talking to each other through a pipe. And he was saying that I don't want to die alone without you. And then he just says, screw it, that he would face the inevitability of death just to see his wife or girlfriend. I can't remember what their relationship is, but just to see her face one more time. So he rushes out into the blowing winds of the Wahlberg aerotoxin and he would soon realize that in his his act of love and selflessness that he was unaffected. They all were. The wind had caught up to them, but they suddenly didn't want to off themselves. How did this happen? You could say that the toxin had finally dissipated at that very moment to give them a happy ending where they all get to live and see other people die instead. But I for a fact know that was not the case. It was through this method that I will bring up shortly that many people that are watching right now won't be able to procure in time for the outbreak. Mark Wahlberg had survived the Wahlberg aerotoxin simply through, I'll let you guess one more time, 
How would he survive? Did he make the toxin from his own twisted mind? No, he's not immune to his own gases. No, the way he survived, the way Mark Wahlberg had survived the Wahlberg aerotoxin was through the power of love. If you feel enough love for someone and are willing to do something stupid for them in the middle of a biochemical attack or a pandemic, then the effects of the aerotoxin will be nullified. So just do that and you can survive. If you cannot do anything previously mentioned or do acts of love that risk your life, then you definitely would not survive the happenings Wahlberg aerotoxin. What? No. <laughs> Breaking her heart That about wraps up this look into The Happening as we break the fourth Wahlberg. If you went into this hoping for a romp riot about childhood IPs turned mass killers, well, let's just say if this video can get 10,000 likes by the end of May, maybe I'll do that in the summer. Maybe we can cover that. Let me know down below if you would like that too. Did you enjoy this brief look at Mother Earth fighting back? Did you like looking at Mark Wahlberg's face many times throughout the video? Do you think you could survive? Let's have a discussion below. Special thanks to my editor Chago aka Quick Flicks for quick fixing up this video for you today. Check him out for awesome movie and show recaps. Special thanks to my Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members for supporting the channel to be featured on this nifty keen list right on here. Look at them all, aren't they cool? Just a buck and you're on here. High five guys. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, stay foolish, stay green, and stay wow. Well.